Can you tell just by looking at me that I was an abused child? Can you tell that I was sexually abused routinely, that I was neglected, starved, beaten? Probably not. You would have to ask in order to find out, and that's not the sort of thing that people typically ask about. My mom called the cops two, three, four times. They just said, we can't do anything about it and then they leave, and then the beatings would get worse. Anything, everything, it was a fight. My dad um, would fight at the table. They would fight at night. My little sister used to pray in her prayers every night that my parents would get divorced. When I was 12 years old, my father and I used to share uh, the same bedroom, the same bed, and um, I woke up with my father um, trying to sexually abuse me. And in, in my waking up, I guess I was making too much noise and he wound up hitting me and breaking my nose. My father would come into my bedroom and have sex with me. If he had my mother go out shopping, he'd send my brother out to play and then he would just use me. And you know, I was one of those kids who had a lot of stuff going on, a lot of, molesting by a lot of different people in the family. There was no place to go to hide. There was no real safety place. I wasn't even a member of the household. As she remarried, I was the kid that slept in the garage that was only allowed in the house to clean for the family, cook for the family, take a shower and go, or a bath. Showers weren't allowed because it took too much water. Take a bath and go back to the garage. She used to talk about how horrible her father was when he was drunk and she would routinely get drunk and stage fights with my dad and stage scenes in our family. The downside of having this kind of childhood is that it translates into health problems in adulthood, at least in my situation it seems to have done. I'm now recovering from my third battle with cancer. Not the same cancer, three different kinds of cancer. I've had chronic pelvic pain, migraines, you know, the whole laundry list of medical complaints, all of those sorts of things that are very difficult for physicians to figure out. I don't know, I think it's not normal for people to have had 10 bladder surgeries and it poorly heal, and in fact, every surgery I've ever had has had complications. My sisters say that it's just how our family is because they have the same kinds of problems. So I don't know. Is it genetic or is it childhood experiences? Two of us are very overweight. Um, two of us are on medication for depression. Two of us are on blood pressure medication. Um, my brother, one of my brothers has had um, most of his colon taken out. He had ulcerative colitis. He wears a bag. He has now just found out that he has diabetes. I mean, these are hugely expensive problems that I think are directly related to what happened to us as kids. The Adverse Childhood Experiences Study, or ACE study, is a retrospective and prospective study of over 17,000 middle-class adults here at Kaiser Permanente in San Diego, matching adult health status and well-being against distant events in childhood on average a half century earlier. It really is a study about the origins of many common chronic health problems in adult life. For me, uh, the origins of interest in that area began when I was training in internal medicine, when I developed a really, a very profound, deep-seated feeling that we were really doing too little too late for many patients. Uh, 
I worked in a VA hospital when I was doing my training, and there was bed after bed of World War II veterans uh, who were suffering from smoking-related illnesses, cancer, emphysema, um, alcohol-related disease, end-stage cirrhosis, and things that are theoretically preventable um, if you don't engage in smoking and alcohol use. And so I became interested in the psychosocial origins of some of the behaviors that I had seen in the VA hospital and some of the behaviors that weren't changing in the American public. And in about 1991, uh, Vincent Folletti from Kaiser Permanente came to CDC and gave a very interesting seminar where he spoke about his discovery in his Department of Preventive Medicine that uh, many of the root causes of medical problems that he was seeing had their origins in childhood abuse and specifically sexual abuse. I mean, these were, these were areas that nice people never discussed and most doctors try to be nice people and hence never bring up any sorts of questions into areas involving incest, rape, childhood physical abuse, growing up with imprisoned household members, etc. And it was only after several years of wrestling with these problems and, and seeing that many things that were commonly described as public health problems were in fact also solutions to personal problems that were totally unrecognized because they were concealed by time, by shame, by secrecy, by social taboo. It was, it was only after several years of wrestling with that um, that I was talking with some people at the CDC, met my now long-term friend and, and collaborator, uh, Dr. Robert Anda there. As a result, uh, I traveled to his department in San Diego from Atlanta and visited his clinic um, which was very impressive. Uh, he had a huge scale, uh, more than 50,000 patients a year that was ideal for doing a large-scale study. Starting in 1995, uh, we began uh, using this survey and we interviewed, um, eventually had 17,421 uh, wonderful people that responded to a very lengthy uh, and very sensitive questionnaire. And the experiences that we examined were three forms of abuse, emotional, physical, and sexual abuse, and then an array of things that we call household dysfunction. And then the, the areas of household dysfunction we looked at were growing up in a home where one of the household members during your childhood or adolescence was alcoholic or a drug user, growing up in a home where someone was mentally ill, chronically depressed, suicidal, or in the state hospital, growing up in a home where mother was treated violently, growing up in a home where one of the members of that household during childhood or adolescence was imprisoned. And then later we added the eighth category, um, growing up during childhood or adolescence with a loss of a, of a biological parent for whatever reason. Later on, we, uh, we changed the study survey as we went along to improve it, and we uh, captured neglect. We, we measured emotional and physical neglect as part of what we call adverse childhood experiences, or ACEs. Uh, 